Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Pluto. In today's video we're going to be discussing this beautiful object and we're going to talk a little bit more about why more and more scientists think that this is not a planet. And also that it's not just not a planet, but that it's actually possibly a very large comet. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. So very recent uh, research from Southwest Research Institute uh, that basically combined a lot of um, various research components from NASA's New Horizon mission, which you can actually find in um, Universe Sandbox by going right here, where back in 2015, the New Horizons probe basically approached or passed by Pluto really, really fast, took a lot of photos, a lot of data, and is now headed to a new destination, uh, an object currently referred to as Ultima Thule. Now, um, this research combined with another research from a comet that we landed on, the comet known as uh, 67P Churumov Gerasimenko, uh, which we landed on just a few years ago. This was uh, yet another mission. Um, and uh, these two uh, pieces of evidence, and I guess data collected during those two missions suggested something that we didn't really think about before. And that something is based on the composition of Pluto that we discovered during the New Horizons mission. It seems that, or it might appear that, based on the amount of nitrogen that there is right here, that Pluto is actually made up out of billions of comets. In other words, unlike other objects in our solar system, unlike our planet Earth and uh, planets like Mars, and even objects like Jupiter and Saturn, this wasn't really made out of uh, clouds of gas, and it wasn't really uh, in any way accreted from that. But it was actually a composition. But it was actually an object that was most likely um, accreted, and in a sense created by the collision of billions of comets over the billions of years. A lot of this is actually based on the fact that we can't really explain why the amount of nitrogen here is very similar to a typical comet such as uh, 67P that's orbiting around it right now. And the other thing is that um, we think that if, if this is actually a cometary body, basically if it's a body made up of comets, uh, this would actually explain why we see features that we see. Like for example, we don't really detect a lot of carbon monoxide here. And this could be possible if it was either buried underneath the ices or, even more so, converted by liquid water underneath all of this. So, it's not just a comet, but it's a comet that is became so big and so large that essentially transformed into what would be a kind of a minor planet, but really a very large cometary body. So, let's actually try to see if we can maybe simulate this. Let's go in here and put a bunch of uh, 67 Ps just sort of in this vicinity and uh, and then just see what happens when they all collide together um, but obviously I won't be able to place a billion of these so we can try to kind of simulate this on a smaller scale uh, let's maybe decrease time a little bit just to see if they start moving toward each other and there you go um, so the interesting thing about all of this is that if, if it is actually true, uh, this suggests that there's a completely different way for planets and for different types of objects to be formed in various star systems that we didn't really think about before. So it could be not just um, different uh, minor planets colliding and creating planets, or asteroids um, combining into larger chunks and then creating planets, but it's also uh, comets that could be orbiting on the outskirts of the uh, star system that could create these unusual objects, uh, or I guess kind of typical ob objects, but that have slightly unusual composition. So here is our very, very rudimentary minor planet that we're creating based on the simulation here that you can see that all these comets are slowly combining to one another. And if, if it's actually, if this is how uh, Pluto was formed, this actually creates a new question. How long did this actually take? And were there actually so many comets in that region that they ended up basically colliding into Pluto? Uh, if that's the case, this means that early solar system may have had a tremendous amount of comets. So many, as a matter of fact, that we just can't even imagine. 
this would also obviously create a lot of new questions for the scientists studying the creation of star systems and a lot of new uh, unresolved issues. Now, obviously, this is not a uh, certainty yet. We still think that maybe, just maybe, there's other ways to explain um, how Pluto was created. But right now, as of now at least, uh, it does actually answer more questions than other similar explanations. So, for all we know, this is maybe how Pluto was made as well. Now, let's actually maybe accelerate this a little bit. I want to create this a little bit faster and turn this into an actual Pluto-like object. So we're going to add like a lot of these um, and make them a little bit more massive just so that it happens slightly faster than than right now. And so here we have a slightly more massive early Pluto. It's um, quite dramatically more massive as a matter of fact. It's about 90 kilometers in radius right now. And we're going to see what happens to it when these larger comets collide with it and basically hopefully create something that looks more planetary. Now, if this is how Pluto was formed, um, this also would suggest that uh, Pluto's internal components would have changed quite dramatically from a typical comet as well. So one of the things that it may have developed on the inside is obviously liquid ocean. And water, especially liquid water, would actually be able to convert a lot of the uh, components that would be typ typical to a comet into something very different. Like, for example, uh, carbon monoxide would actually be uh, totally absorbed and most likely create a lot of hydrogen and uh, carbon dioxide or would possibly create some other organic components that uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to find on Pluto. Uh, obviously, this is not really uh, that complex of an explanation just yet, but basically what this suggests is that over time, Pluto uh, absorbed more and more comets and as it acquired more and more mass, it also changed in internal composition and external appearance as well. Most importantly, this explanation actually does give us a reason to, uh, well, really explain and also understand why there is so much nitrogen on the surface and why there is actually a very thin um, nitrogen atmosphere, because this would be something typical of comets and something that's kind of slowly escaping from the inside and is creating the atmospheric uh, layer that we discovered on Pluto when uh, the New Horizon passed by here. On the other hand, uh, if this is actually a more realistic explanation of how Pluto was formed, this also would mean that... Um, let's go back to Pluto for a second. This, this would mean that its moons may have actually been formed in a similar fashion. So it's kind of possible that all of these objects were formed from some sort of a primordial cometary accretion disk. In other words, there may have been some sort of a mass in the middle that turned into Pluto, and there were these comets just orbiting around and slowly uh, coalesced into other objects, including uh, the biggest partner here, Charon. So for now, that's kind of all we know. This is still, um, well, it's a hypothesis, but it's a very sort of um, realistic hypothesis and a very interesting prediction of what Pluto may have actually been <coughs> and a very interesting assumption of what uh, Pluto may have been made out of. But it also basically puts the dent into the idea of Pluto being a planet because it does seem to have different origins. And this is actually something that we need to consider. Obviously, for a planet to be defined as a planet, its origins might also need to be studied. So for all we know, um, Pluto might not be a planet after all, simply because it wasn't made out of the same material and in the same way as other planets. So maybe in the future we'll redefine our definition of a planet and be able to either include more objects or exclude some of the objects that we have um, defined as planets, like for example, Neptune and Uranus. Maybe for all we know, they're also something completely different. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about Pluto and you've learned a little bit more about this research uh, based on the New Horizons mission. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.